Hi, good morning. Welcome to First Church of Christ in Long Meadow. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself this morning, whether it's on your couch in your pajamas, or whether you were with a lot of family eating breakfast, we welcome you here with us at First Church of Christ. Come on in, we're gonna worship now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to First Church of Christ in Longmeadow. Whoever you are and wherever you're watching this, whatever time of day or day of the week, we welcome you here with us as we make worship together. This is the first Sunday after Pentecost. It's also Communion Sunday. And we begin to celebrate our Pride Month. Even if you didn't get to march in a parade yesterday, you can still celebrate. Please pray for our LBGTQI brothers and sisters. Please pray for our nation as we begin to open our hearts and to remember what we have always known from Genesis, that all of us have the breath of life of God inside us. So put on something that's rainbow colored, parade around your house and pray. Today, we also begin a new worship series from sanctified art called Unraveling Our Plans Fall Apart. Now, through the end of summer, we'll explore what happens when your world falls apart, when your plans unravel into loose threads. What do you do when that happens? Well, sometimes... Sometimes you get surprised because God has something new for you. And it's only in the unraveling that you can imagine this new thing. This month we'll be exploring stories of unraveled shame, identity, fear, grief, dreams, and expectations. Stories where God meets us in the spiraling, unraveling our plans and us into something new. We'll be in this program all summer long. Now for a few announcements. Our regular weekly series are ending and we'll start back up after Labor Day. That's Bible study, contemplative prayer, um, interfaith coffee, and coffee hour right before this show. But 
before this worship, but don't forget, our children will still be meeting all summer long. Our church school meets from 11 to 12 every Sunday. If you'd like to reach out to any of us, please contact us at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. Next week, we'll have news for you of a new series that's beginning for the summer. It's a combination of Bible study, prayer, and journaling. We'll have more about that next week. Now, for all of you who are joining us live, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and begin to send in your prayer requests. Remembering that this is a public forum and that all you need to do is name first name of people because God knows who they are, and what they need. And if you don't have your communion ready, get it now. Whatever you're going to use to be the bread of life and the cup of hope, have it ready so when we share the Lord's Supper, you'll be there and you'll be with us. Finally, as you saw in our slideshow just a few minutes ago, we begin our annual Haiti Scholarship Drive. And next week, after worship at 1 o'clock, please join us on Zoom as we take a look at our last trip and what's happening with our partners down in Conness Bay. Please go ahead now, though, and begin to send in your pledges. If you have supported the children in Haiti in the past, continue. If you need more information about that, you'll be hearing about it in all of our posts and next week in worship. It's a chance for all of us to change the lives of children and for their education to be their hope and the hope of their whole family. And now, please join me in prayer. Take a nice deep breath in and relax and pray. God of unending surprises, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together, and we long to be weavers of love with you. Today, we gather and pray that you would unravel our bias, unravel our assumptions, unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you, and as you do, clear some space in our hearts for your word. We are listening, God. We are praying. Amen. So now stand up, clap your hands, sing along. The words are on the screen. Join us in peace like a river.
today we are celebrating our graduating seniors. Now this has been a difficult time to graduate. The years of dreaming, of prom, of walking in caps and gowns, of graduation parties together, of senior year, have been canceled. Today, we pray for our First Church of Christ seniors, and we remember them here. Join us in celebrating them.
as many of you know, I'm Diane Peluso, and I'm here this morning to present the Virginia Burgess Scholarship Award. This award is given in memory of my grandmother, who was a dedicated leader and supporter of church youth groups. We give this, word, this award to an active member of our youth group who has had a positive impact on the group. This year, the award is being given to Naomi Topa. Naomi is friendly and welcoming to everyone. She has joyfully helped out with Church Without Walls, the Church Fair, and Loaves and Fishes. She is also an active member of the Youth Group's Book Club. Naomi's faith is evident in her actions, and she is incredibly insightful. We could not think of a more deserving person to receive this award. Congratulations, Naomi. Our scripture today is from the book of Genesis, Genesis 18. And by the 18th chapter, we have already met Abraham and Sarah. God has spoken to Abraham and called him, and Abraham has answered and pledged himself and his whole tribe to the one God. God promises Abraham that his son will lead nations. And then Abraham and Sarah have no children. In chapter 17, Abraham has called all of his people, all of the men and even the male animals to be circumcised, even though he is in his 90s. And so in chapter 18, we find them all resting in the heat of the day at Mamre under bushes, sitting at the entrance to his tent, resting, probably trying to catch a cool breeze. And suddenly when he looks up, there are three men standing there, messengers of God. And when he sees them, he says, oh, I didn't see you. Please sit down. Let me get you something to drink. Let me get you something to eat. Let me give you my hospitality and the hospitality of all my people. And he runs and tells his wife, Sarah, to prepare much bread, the best meat, meal. And then he served as they're eating. One of them says, so at first there's three. And Abraham talks to the three messengers. And then we hear him call one messenger, Lord. And that one says, I'll come back by here next year. And when I come by, Sarah will have a son. Well, when Sarah hears this, she's in the tent, and she hears him say she will have a son, and she laughs. She laughs in her mind. She laughs in her head. Are you kidding me? She's well past menopause in her 90s, and so is Abraham. She says, me have a child? But the messenger says, why did, why did Sarah laugh? Is there anything that is impossible for God? And that's the story today about Sarah's laughter. Now, I love to laugh. If you know me, you know that's true. Lots of things in the world just strike me as funny. I, I sometimes am just going down the road and I see something that I have always seen before, but suddenly it looks funny to me or amusing and I laugh out loud. I love to laugh with children. I'm always one of those people looking for one of those Facebook videos of children and puppies laughing and barking together. I love, I love to laugh. And I love to laugh when I'm surprised by something. Those are my favorite kind of jokes, when I don't expect what's coming. That particularly pleases me. When things frightened me, I laugh. Sometimes the more frightened I am, the more I laugh, I can't seem to help it. And I laugh when things are outrageous, when they're impossible, <laughs> when I'm sure that could never happen. Things are unbelievable. George Carlin says that if you scratch a cynic, what you find is an idealist who has lost hope. Sarah and Abraham are in their 90s and have no children, even though God told Abraham his son would lead nations. And they waited and waited and waited. And finally, 
Sarah forced her servant, her slave, Hagar, to have a child with her husband, and then she claimed that child as her own. I'm pretty sure Hagar didn't laugh. So now, Sarah and, he- and Abraham, they are settled. They are used to their lives and their age. And who turns up but messengers, angels, who say that she will have a child. And so, of course, she laughs. Who wouldn't laugh? Our, deal- our idealists in this story, well, they have lost hope, and so they laugh. In fact, in the chapter before, Abraham laughed about the same thing. So stay with me here now, all of my good friends out there who are idealists. Don't get stuck on how is it possible for a woman well past menopause to have a child. How is it possible for a man almost 100 to father a child? Don't get stuck there and miss what's really important and happening in this story. This story is not about a 100-year-old man being young. Mm -mm. This story is about what is possible with God. This story is about God. It's about how we can open our hearts and take a chance and be made new. That it's never too late to start something new and that you are never too old to keep living or to take a chance or to hope. Now, it's true we're living in this time of pandemic and people are beginning to lose hope. Some people have decided to just ignore the warnings about this deadly disease and be out more because they just can't take it anymore. And some people, well, some people are staying at home, but they too have begun to believe it will never end. They've lost hope. And it's true that we are in this difficult time in our country when we are facing up to the problem of racism. Some of us act like we thought that problem had gone away. People of color might laugh at that, but not because it's funny. Because they know that it has not changed. They know what we are sometimes just learning, which is we have built our whole nation on privilege. Why else would an Italian white guy discover a land where people have been living for thousands and thousands of years and act like it was all brand new? He didn't discover it. People had been here. I'm pretty sure the native people weren't laughing. But now, at least, we are waking up. And we are marching and we are protesting about racism. We are recognizing that racism is interwoven into the very fabric of our lives and our country. It's sort of the water all of us fish are swimming in. For the first time, we are sort of waking up to the idea that Our nation has been built on the backs of people of color. What we thought was progress was really just us looking away. Because, well, because we can laugh, imagining things have changed. Now, the people in our nation who have lived through such hard times and who are the brunt and the oppressed, the people of color... Well, they're way older than Abraham. This has been going on here for longer than 100 years. Even though we have said America has passed racism, which of course is preposterous and ridiculous and not possible. In today's story, the messengers ask, is there anything impossible with God? Well, what if a 90-year-old woman can have a baby? Then things are possible. What if, as a people, we can rise up and change the very fabric here? What if we can end racism? Really? I mean, maybe you are a cynic now because you have given up on some of your idealism. And maybe you would say to me, really? Really? Well, God can bring new life. 
There are many things that can happen we cannot imagine. It is possible to end this barrenness of the inequality in our systems. It is possible. That next year, Sarah birthed Isaac. And just so happens the word Isaac means laughter. Many things seem impossible until we do them. It was impossible, they said, for anyone to go to the moon, and then we saw people walk on it. It has been impossible, they say, to do most of the things that we have done. So what is possible? Well, we could ask Sarah, or better yet, let's ask her son, Isaac. Call him over to you. Hey, laughter, come here. Amen. Would you come with me into the time of prayer? Despite the many ways that sometimes our lives may feel like they are unraveling, we trust in you, O God, when you tell us that you weave us into a beautiful tapestry that is your creation. And so we have the confidence to lift our prayers to you and trust that in you they are answered. This morning we lift up prayers for Alvin, for Jerry and Peg, for Dana, for Jen and Amanda, for Carol after her husband Paul passed away this Thursday. We lift up prayers for our country. May this be a moment of living into our ideals of freedom and justice. A prayer of thanksgiving for the Chancel Choir Zoom and a time for being together. A prayer of blessing for our graduating seniors. A prayer for my mother-in-law, Joan, in her final days on hospice, and all her children, including my husband, Peter, who are watching in vigil. A prayer for Rabbi Mark Shapiro, who still is languishing. For Aunt Mina, and for all LGBTQ siblings everywhere for justice and equality and full life for them. Prayers for justice, 
for our justice system, our judges, our prisons, our police, for reform of systemic racism and the strengthening of those in our system who already serve and protect us with in inherent dignity, integrity, and justice. May they be strengthened and sustained. A prayer for all black and brown siblings, for all who consider their lives to be um, oppressed and unjust and behind and in the margins, that the transformation of our society into a truly racially just and fair place for all in this country come about now. A prayer for all elder members who are transitioning out of this life. Prayers for all who are in assisted living, especially Stephanie. Prayers for all who we love, who are in our hearts. Prayers for all who are sick, all who are in prison, all whose lives are in the margin, all who feel powerless, who may be voiceless, that we may hear their voices and be your hands and feet, O oh God, to bring justice for them, for us all. Because until all of us are free, none of us are free. And I lift this to you in prayer this morning in the name of our brother Jesus Christ. And we come now to the time of offering when we shift our prayers out into the world and ask that our God bless all the ways in which we are giving out of the incredible abundance that God provides us. Whether it is our donations, the phone calls we make, the cards and letters we send, the visits, the donations, the ways in which we give back out to make our world a better place. May all of that be blessed, O oh God, and may it do so much more than we can do alone to meet the needs of your children everywhere. And if you are able, please will you rise in body or spirit where you are in your home as we sing our faith, the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, one. Amen. So as we come to the time of communion, if you don't already have your bread and cup, if you don't already have your crackers and juice or whatever you're using this morning, Get it now, because we want you to join us in sharing the bread of life and the cup of hope. Join us in these words of confession. God of unexpected joy and answered prayer, we confess that sometimes things feel too good to be true, while at other times we wonder if you hear us at all. When life unravels for the worst, we blame you. But when life unravels for the best, filling our days with holy surprise, we tend to praise ourselves, thinking we've earned this unexpected joy. Forgive us. Help us to see you in our midst. And with every breath that turns into a laugh, draw us closer to you. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered us in an upper room. He gave thanks. He broke bread. And he said to them, take and eat. This is my body. As often as you eat bread, remember me. And on the night before he died, Jesus filled the cup and lifted it. He asked for praise and blessing, Almighty God, and he shared it with his friends and said to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the sacrifice and the promise of forgiveness for everyone. 
Jesus asks us to remember him by eating and drinking this meal together. And when we do this, we remember his death and we proclaim his resurrection as we await his coming again in glory. We trust his promise to send the Holy Spirit to us at this table. We ask now for the Holy Spirit to be present in this bread and in this cup and in each person, no matter where they are sharing this holy meal. May our communion with one another embody the communion of God with humankind. May our rejuvenation through this feast make us mindful of God's constant presence and provision throughout our journey. O oh God, meet us in the breaking of the bread and in the pouring of the wine, God, our Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Won't you celebrate with us now? in the bread of life and the cup of blessing. And now I invite you to say with us the Lord's Prayer in the words that are comfortable for you. Our, Our Father, Creator, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you now to rise in body or spirit wherever you are to sing joyfully our closing hymn, In the Bulb There is a Flower. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until it sees. Thank you all for joining us today for worship. I'd also just like to let you know that we have a new team that's formed here at the church. It's a reopening task force, and they will be meeting to take a look at what criteria are necessary so that we can all safely come back to worship together. But until that happens, and probably even after it happens, keep worshiping with us like this, live or in recording. Because no matter how or when we worship together, our living God is among us. Also, remember that it's pride, so dress up, celebrate, and say a prayer. Also, we want to really reach out for one last time to all of our senior students. This church loves you. You are a part of us. And no matter where you go, no matter how far, you will always be a part of us and welcome. We can't wait to see you when you come back home. Also, I want to remind you to laugh. Laugh often, laugh long, laugh hard. Laugh at babies and puppies who are laughing. Laugh at the absurdity that you see around you. 
but laugh and hold on to hope because we are a people of the resurrection. And that means it is never over. Christ is always with us. And we and Christ will always rise day by day. Also, next Sunday, please join us for our Haiti Scholarship Drive on Zoom at 1 o'clock. If you need the information on how to join us, please reach out to me, office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. But you can go ahead and begin sending in your donations. The Education of Children in Haiti is a ministry this church has been a part of for over 30 years. It's one way that we are changing our world. God bless you. See you next week. It'd be so easy just to turn away. too strong oh who are we to change the world but in courage and love we find together we're strong we have wisdom purpose and you let the gospel Let the gospel